is uh, haunted. There's been many stories over the years of sightings on the site of airmen, etc. Um, many people visiting the museum have said it has a it has that feel to it. Many want to investigate. Um, but I'd like a certain chap to come and investigate. He's known as Christopher Huff and he does have a YouTube channel, uh, British Hauntings and Histories. I'll put a link in the description and he's done some really good videos on uh, the older airfields, the histories and some of the ghost stories. So, please go check his channel out um, and let's uh, get on with today's video. So on the uh, Remembrance Weekend, a little project arrived at the museum, stroke the workshop. Uh, this being the reduction gear, uh, this is the part that has the shaft for the propeller uh, from a Bristol Hercules engine. Uh, it's basically just the, the cover from the front of the engine and the reduction gears inside. It's to be used as a memorial and I've been asked if I can, how should we say, make it lose some weight. Um, so, that's what this video is about, uh, a little history. The aircraft, Halifax MZ 763, was with the uh, 78th Squadron at Ariette Breton. Um, and on the uh, 23rd of September 1944, while returning from an operation over Germany, it was shot down by a, um, a Heinkel 219. Sadly, four of the crew did die on this operation. Uh, I don't know a great deal of history on it, however, it has got real history. So, if uh, the reduction gear can be extracted from it, uh, maybe we have a new display for the museum with a lot of history. So, let's, uh, let's go take a look. So, unlike the Rolls-Royce Merlin, which was quite a, a conventional engine, the Bristol Hercules was a 14-cylinder radial engine and instead of having the traditional poppet valves it had sleeve valves meaning the cylinder bore itself is a sleeve which moves up and down as well as the piston quite a, a complicated affair as you can see by the uh, the photos here so anyway this is the reduction gear which would go right at the front of the engine and where the air screw would fit um, it belongs to a chap called Andy Ward and it's to be a memorial. He does the 3D printed propeller blades and hubs um, and it's going to be a wall mounted display. It needs to lose some weight which means removing the gears out of here and the first obstacle is to remove this thrust nut as can be seen here. It's uh, it's probably not been removed uh, ever. There's a good chance that's never been taken off. Uh, this aircraft, a Halifax, a Mark III MZ763, which uh, was with 78 Squadron at RAF Breton, um, was sadly shot down on a, when coming back from an operation in Germany. Um, and it, it was shot down by a Heinkel night fighter and crashed in the Netherlands. I don't know much of its history but it's in here for, um, for some attention so the first thing I had to do folks because I don't have any spanners suitable and I doubt there's any on eBay so I kind of looked at it, worked out a plan the plan fell out my head and I welded it together it looks horrible, however, it should do the job. Well, let me take this. Let me get it. 
Well, folks, it's uh, it's taken some heat, and I've had to weld a couple of plasters on my spanner, which sounds like it's got another crack in it. At least now we can get the uh, the lock ring, the uh, thrust nut, I believe it's called. Folks, let's take a closer look. Right, you can see the threads there. The threads still look good. I can only assume it's the very fine tolerances used with threads that uh, made it so tight because it did start off relatively uh, free. Look at this. This is 1930s technology, folks. So I struggled and got it onto the press. Um, you can see just down there, that's the pressure gauge. Goes up to 20 tons. I'm hoping we don't need anywhere near that. So let's, um, let's just start giving it some pressure. And we're looking here for movement. So folks, let's... And that's got a ton of pressure. Oh, there you go. Not a bang, nothing, it just moved. Better just check underneath. Just a little bit of clearance. Checking underneath where the uh, the reduction gear is because I can only go so far without needing to get more clearance. Just spray a bit of that in there. So it's safe to say if the heat wasn't needed on the nut and it had just undone like it started. This is coming apart as, as well as it would have done back in 94. There we go. I need a bit more clearance. Right. I'll lift this up and then we'll uh, just push it the last bit. So I've just put a couple of pieces of wood under it. Wise. And she's out. So now the casing should be yeah, completely free. So we can uh, we can get that off the press. We'll uh, we can take a closer look, folks. So as you can see, we've got the shaft out. You can see the bear in there. Um, if we take a look inside, you can see the fixed bevel gear. 
back of the bearing. There was even a snail in there. Now, these two just dropped out and we did sustain, I believe, a small amount of damage. Had this come out with the shaft, you can see that there, folks. Well, they actually fit in there, one either side. And when we take a look at the shaft, you can see this bit. So I think that might have bent over off that pin, but not to worry. So there we have the, uh, the air screw shaft. The reduction gear, obviously uh, the fixed gear would sit here. And, and just look at that folks, look how clean that is. It's as good as it was in 1944. So, Quite, a, quite an amazing uh, piece of work. Basically the engine drove this one and as that rotated it rotated these which rotate around the uh, around the fixed gear which actually makes this part rotate slower than that part. That's a very, very, very clever piece of equipment. So, next, is to remove the fixed gear, which um, has been there a while. But I could use these to press on. If I had something circular, I could just put over the top and then put something on the press. Let's see what I can find. Oh, it's got a few tons on it. You tend to be moving, folks. Leave it a little bit. Proper bodge. Bit of pressure on. Something might be moving. Yeah, that's gone slack. I think she's going, folks. There she flies. Just stuff those inside. That way, when it uh, drops to the bottom, there, it's got a cushion landing. Have a bit of respect for history, folks. Going. 
I will be honest, I did, uh, before I commenced this operation, I asked if there was any members of the ground crew from MZ763 and if they'd like to just uh, come and give me some help. Well, to be fair, it hasn't come apart too bad. As soon as this uh, reduction gear drops, Would you believe that? Another casual tick. It's so close. I can feel the studs in there. I can't see them in there. Let me go get another, uh, another suitable punch. Right, try again. Nearly through the casing. She flies. Let's take a closer look. So there we have a very lightweight uh, reduction gear case with only its bearing left in. Now have the reduction fixed gear out. And look at that, it's like dirty but brand new. Amazing condition for such uh, an old piece of aluminium. So, shall we have a look at the, uh, the gear? So this is the fixed gear from inside the casing. You can see where the, uh, the smaller gears were sat since 1944. Let's just turn this over. Look at the shine in there, that's amazing. And there we have the back side of it. And again, that's like brand new. So as you can see there, that piece is for those two. I'll, uh, I'll try and sit it all back in place. So you can see how it actually sits. Has to be said, what amazing engineering folks. This was made in probably 1944 uh, and sadly lost in 1944. So there's a good chance this has actually never been removed from the case in there. Um, yeah, it's quite, uh, it's quite amazing to actually get the chance to take something like this apart. More so with its history. Sadly, four of the crew members of uh, MZ763 perished when, uh, when the aircraft was shot down. And some may say that taking these sort of things apart is wrong. But, in my mind, and uh, Andy Ward's mind, with his 3D printed propeller hub and blades, on this and mounted to a wall it's a memorial to the crew and to all those of bomber command and it'll it'll tell the story of of this crew the aircraft but also in the museum we also can tell that same story of the crew but we can also show this amazing engineering which uh, is part of a bristol hercules engine to think that chef once had a propeller on it that was taking young lads over to Germany in places some of them never coming back quite humbling 
quite a sobering thought. Anyway, that's it for this uh, this video. This is part one because from what I'm finding, um, things may develop with the reduction gear. It's looking promising that it could maybe be brought back to a uh, an operational state, which would make one hell of a display. So, folks, thanks for uh, thanks for watching, liking, subscribing, all that jazz. Catch you on the next one.